I have a list of numbers here. And my goal over the course of this video is to actually order these numbers, or I guess think of it, order these quantities, however you want to view it. And some of these are expressed as percentages, this one and this one over here. Some is pure decimals, and some of these as fractions. And this fraction right here is a proper fraction, and this right here is a mixed number. And there's a bunch of ways you can order it. You could just get an intuitive sense of roughly how large this is and try to order it that way. Or you could put it all in the exact same format and then compare it directly. And at least for me, the easiest format to put these all in and that makes the comparisons easy would be to put them all into a decimal format. So 35.7%, 35.7% is literally the same thing as 35.7 per hundred. Percent, per percent, cent for 100. So it's literally the same thing as 35.7 over 100. Or this is the same thing as dividing 35.7 by 100. And when you divide something by, let me do it this way. If I have 35, let me do it in that same color actually. If I have 35.7, if I have 35.7, if I divide it by 10, I'm going to move the decimal place over to the left once. 35.7 divided by 10 is 3.57. If I divide it by 100, I'm going to move the decimal to the left one more time. So if you divide this by 100, you get the decimal is in front of the 3 now, 0.357. I'll put the 0 out here just to make sure that we know where the decimal is and all of that. So you take 35.7 divided by 100, you get 0.357. Now let's think about 108.1%. percent The same thing. It's the same thing as 108.1 divided by 100. And this is the same thing as 108.1. If you divide by 10, you're going to move the decimal to the left once. If you divide by 100, you're going to move the decimal to the space to the you're going to move the decimal to the left twice. And so the decimal's going to end up right over here. So this is the same thing as 1.01.081. And so it's clearly greater. And obviously, these were both in percentage. I didn't have to convert, convert them to realize that 35.7% is smaller than 108.1%. But now we have them both in decimals. This 0 0.5 already in a decimal. We don't have to convert it. 0, 0 0.5. Then we have 13 93rds, or 13 over 93. And the easiest way to convert this to a decimal is literally perform the division. 13 93rds is the same thing as 13 divided by 93. So let's figure out what that is. Let's divide 93 into 93 into 13. And this number is going to be smaller than 1. 13 is smaller than 93, so this number is going to be smaller than 1. So we're going to have. Definitely things to the right of a decimal point. So I'm going to add, I added some trailing zeros here to the 13. Didn't change its value. And I'm going to put the decimal right up there. And you say 93 goes into 13. Well, it doesn't go into 1. It doesn't go into 13. But it does go into 130. 93 goes into 130 one time. And 1 times 93 is 93. And now we can subtract. And you could do this in your head. 130 minus 93, that's 37. Because 130 minus 100 would be 30. And then you got the 7 more to get to 93. Or if you want, you could do it by regrouping. You could say, well, let me take 1 away from this 3. So that becomes a 2. And it's in the 10's place. So I really, it was really, I took a 10 away from it. And I'm regrouping it into the 1's place. So this becomes a 10. And for the sake of just this mini computation, you shouldn't be thinking about this decimal right over here. We're really viewing this as 130 minus 93. And so you have 10 minus 3 is 7. And then you could view this as 12 minus 9, which would be 3. Or if you want to do it more formally, you could say, look, 2 minus 9, I don't want to, I don't want to subtract a larger number from a smaller number. So let me borrow 1 from the hundreds place. And I give that to the tens place. But I'm really borrowing 100. 100 represented in the tens place is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. That's really what we're doing. But 12 minus 9 is 3. So that's where we get our 37. Bring down, bring down another 0. How many times does 93 go into 370? It looks like it would go about 3 times. 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times, three times 9 is 27. And when we subtract, 
we get, let's see, we want to borrow one from the tens place. So this would become 10. This would become a 6. We're really regrouping a 10 and just and writing it in the tens place. So it looks like, so in the ones place now, so it's a 10. And so 10 minus 9 is 1. Now we have a 6 here. We don't want to do 6 minus 7, so let's regroup again. Let's take 100 from the hundreds place, put it in the tens place, so that really becomes 10 tens. 10 plus 6 is 16. Or if you think about it, we're borrowing a 1. 16 minus 7 is 9. And then we have, sorry, this is a 2 right here. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we're just left with a 91. And then we could put a, we can bring down another 0 here. Bring down another 0. 93 goes into 910, 9 times, I believe. And let's try it out. 3 times 9, or 9 times 3 is 27, is 27. And then 9 times 9 is 81, plus 2 is 83. And we can keep going here. We can keep going here. Let's see. We can't, won't want to subtract the 7 from the 0. So let's borrow one from the tens place. So this becomes a 0. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. And then we go to the tens place. 0 minus 3, don't want to do that. Borrow 1 from the hundreds place. This becomes an 8. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 8 minus 8 is nothing. So we're left with a remainder of 73. And we can keep going. We can keep adding digits here. But I think this is enough for us to make the comparison. So 13 over 93, 13 90 thirds is equal to 0 0.139. And we can keep going and adding and adding more decimals to this. Now, finally, we have 1 and 7 sixty-eighths. There's a couple of ways to think about it. You could just figure out what 7 sixty-eighths is as a decimal and add that to 1. Or we can rewrite this as an improper fraction and then write that as a decimal. So we could, just to get the practice, let's write this as an improper fraction. So 1 and 7 sixty-eighths, I'll do it over here, 1 and 7 sixty-eighths is the same thing as 1 plus 7 over 68, which is the same thing as 68 over 68 plus 7 over 68. I really just found a common denominator. 1 is the same thing as 68 over 68. And so this is equal to, now that we have a common denominator, over 68. 68 plus 7 is 75. So if we want to write it as a mixed number, it is 75 over 68. And now we can literally just divide 75 by 68 and figure out what it is expressed as a decimal, and then we can put it in order. And so let's try it out. And we can also you know, just look at the numbers. If we're trying to do this as quickly as possible, you can so sometimes just estimate, well, gee, how, how large is it compared to the other things? Well, this thing is definitely going to be over 1. So it's definitely larger than this guy, definitely larger than this guy, and definitely larger than this guy. Not super clear whether it's definitely larger than this guy over here, this 1.08. I suspect it will be, but let's verify. So we're going to divide. We're going to divide 75 by 68. So we're going to divide 68 into 75. And we care about what happens after the 1. So let's add some zeros to the right of the decimal spot. 68 goes into 75 one time. 1 times 68 is 68. And then we subtract. And then we subtract. And we have a, let's see, 5 minus 8. We're going to need a regroup or borrow. Let's make this a 15. We're borrowing or regrouping from the tens place. This is just a 6. 15 minus 8 is 7. Bring down a 0. 68 goes into 70 one time. So we actually already have done enough to figure out how this compares to this number up here. We know that if we keep going, you know, 1 times 68 is 68. We subtract. We get 2 here. Bring down another 0. 68 doesn't go into tw it doesn't go to 20 at all. It goes into it 0 times. And so we already see it's at least 1.10, and then we're going to keep going as we keep dividing. But we see that this value is already, already greater than the 1.08, 1.081. So if we really want need to order these numbers, this is the largest. So I'll write it, I'll order it this way. The largest is 1 and 7 68 the next largest was this 1.081, which in its original form was 108.1%. The next largest after that is this 0 0.5. The next largest after that is the 0 0.5. And then we have the 0 0.357, which was the same thing as the 35.7%. 35.7%. And then finally, the smallest value was the 13 over 93. 
the 13 over 93. Now I did this. I went through all of the work, and I divided them all out. I converted them all to decimals. But when you're just purely ordering the numbers, it's sometimes a good idea, or maybe if you're, do, if you're, if you're constrained for time, you might want to estimate. For example, like right over here, you could say, look, this thing is definitely greater than 1. So the only thing that's kind of competitive with it for the top spot is this right over here. And the way I thought about it is that this, when we write, wrote this as a mixed number, when we wrote this as a mixed number, this is 75 over 60. Or actually, think of it this way. We don't even have to write it as a mixed number. 7 68 7 over 70 would be 0.1. So this is more than 0.1, because we have a smaller denominator over here. So this is going to be greater than 1.1. This is going to be greater than 1.1. Just estimating it, just looking at it right over there. And so that would have given you a good sense. Look, that's going to be greater than this, which is 1.08. So that would have helped you order this as the largest, this is the second largest. Then it's pretty obvious that this is less than a half, and this is less than a half. This would have to be 50% to be less than a half. So then you'd put the 0 0.5. And then 35.7, that still 35.7% is greater than a third. 13 is less than a third of 93. A third of 93 would be 31. And so you could say, well, the next smallest or the next largest, I guess, or the next smallest down going in, in descending order would be the 35.7%. And then finally, the 13 over 93. So if your goal is just to order it, that's a, a completely valid way of doing it. And it would actually take you a little less time.